Alright, I thought I'd make a video again of the uh, Andrea Designs microcode unit that I put together. It's uh, side by side with my uh, K42 CW keyboard here. The thing about the microcode that I like is that it has different functions you can change by pressing the top button here. You press it once, you can go with a single speed. Uh, basically what it's going to do is it's going to show you one single line of text for CW and then show you the uh, appropriate speed or approximate, if you will, speed uh, that they're keying at. Then you can get a dual line text. So the difference would be, and I'll save that right away, on your dual line text, you're going to put text on two lines. Go ahead and make a form to finish out here. And you'll see it's got uh, text on two lines there. If I go back into the menu and change it to single plus speed, it'll automatically save it. And now it's going to give me his approximate words per minute, as well as what they're typing out uh, up top. The conditions are really not so grand today, so unfortunately it's not doing too, uh, too great on either unit for CW. Anyway, let's get back into some other features. If you don't want to get into your uh, displays format, you can press it again and go to your backlight, LCD backlight. Right now I've got it set up for dim. You can go to high, or you can turn it on. It's really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go down dim. And then you've got your input source. Right now I'm set for line. I can change it to either key, or mic, or line. I'm going to leave it on line because I have my line coming in right there. But if I was going to use the microphone without the line, I've got a built-in mic I have right there that picks up CW pretty darn good. Uh, there's some uh, adjustable resistors inside that you have to play with to get it down uh, within the particular frequency it's set up for uh, for the circuit. But once you do that, it's great. So to save this, I go ahead and press the top one. It will go ahead and save everything. So basically, I'll go on the bottom again and show you what I've done. By pressing the top, it'll cycle through them. Single and speed it's set up for. The backlight set up for dim, and my input source is line. Just push it again, and we'll go ahead and resave it again. So that's basically uh, basically it. Over here, you'll see I have a lit up uh, 12 volt toggle switch with a 12 volt input source for my Radio Shack. Looks pretty nice. Now the back of the unit, I don't know if you can see, it's pretty big on dark in here. Just a standard back. I mean, it's enclosed now. It's sitting up on top of the uh, FT950 alongside of its uh, brother or cousin, if you will, the K42. And uh, it's on top of my 950. So I want to show a little bit of features of what you could do with the microcode. I mean, it's not just a decoder. You can, you can practice CW if you want with it, too, uh, with the key input right there. So my key over here is electronic. It's not going to work, unfortunately, with it. This is an electronic paddle. Uh, but if you were to use a straight keyer or a paddle that does not have any type of electronics, then you can go ahead and utilize this key jack over here, and it would allow you to practice CW. So you can practice Morse code and see what you're typing up here, as well as know what the speed is, which is pretty cool. Uh, the mic was pretty easy to put in. Usually it mounts on the surface board of the micro code itself, but I obviously the case is much bigger. So I had to use some wires and bring it over here to the side. And I got it held in uh, pretty darn good though. And I got it dressed up a little bit, looking pretty uh, snazzy with some silverish outline. So it's looking kind of like a, like a rock star, if you will. I'm going to go ahead and uh, play around a little bit, see if we can't get any, anything better. Go ahead and turn up the volume a little. I'm searching right now. It's the middle of the day. Uh, usually, um, 40 meters is pretty darn good at all times. But right now, there isn't a whole lot going on for uh, CW or Morse code in the middle of the day. There's a little bit.
not bad. A little bit of a signal there. It's a lot better when you get a signal in that's decent and you're seeing that it's actually spitting out more stay, which obviously it, it is. And they're both doing a pretty darn good job. You want to go ahead and maybe throw on a uh, filter. Well, the FT950 has a narrow filter. And man, is that night and day. <laughs> Absolutely no comparison. You take that and put that narrow filter on and it's a whole new beautiful world. CW, uh, more so that he's starting to sound kind of sick. I don't know why, but I can go ahead and straighten up some stuff here. And you see they both have a threshold but they can't detect the Morse code within, so uh, I believe this is about 690 for the CW keyer and it's about 700 over here for the uh, micro code, so they're pretty darn close. Um, one can sometimes decode, whereas the other one cannot very accurately because they're, they're very close, but they're a little bit off uh, from each other. But I have had those rare, beautiful times when they both coincide with one another uh, in harmony. I'm going to go ahead and turn the filter off again. And now you're back to Noiseville. And another neat thing I like to do too is to go ahead and just use the antenna tuner. Tune up the band. And it'll make your antenna resonant. That always helps a lot. And so we'll go ahead and see what's going on here. Run through it one more time here. Hopefully uh, we can find something. See if it's going to start uh, decoding the moist for us or not. Pretty heavily tromped on out there. I'm going to go ahead and hit the narrow filter for the heck of it. Oh, isn't that wonderful? With the narrow filter on the FT950 uh, radio by Razor is just spectacularly awesome for CW. Night and day on day, man. Beautiful. And then you can deal along with uh, different roofing filters as well. Right now it's on auto. So right now we're on 3 kilohertz. There's 6. And there's 15. Lots more. So, I mean, that's not bad. There we go. Back to 3 auto. So that was a lot narrow. It's beautiful because it cuts out a lot of adjacent noise and a lot of adjacent. Uh, signals, and all you hear is just beautiful uh, motion. So there again, that's the, that's the kit I built yesterday. I really love this uh, micro coat here by Congress of Congress. It's a great design, uh, and also a beautiful location in England. Uh, gorgeous over there. i got to get back over there. That's my homeland. My last name is Wesley, you know, so hey, let's take a look here. Awesome. I hope you enjoyed this. So I'm going to go ahead and kick the narrow filter off again. There you go. Back to the noise you're used to. Ah, uh, this is why we love filters when we deal with rigs. Oh, good dog. This is going to be everyone. It's been a pleasure uh, going over this with you guys. You know, let me see what these keys can do. I have them in unison here on top of the FG950. It's just simple gorgeous. And there's my little scroll, he changes colors. Got the whole world on the desk. I use the 7800, my power supply. This little clock can shoot some uh, time data up on the uh, ceiling. There we go, so I know what time it is. And I know the relative uh, humidity, uh, temperature, if you will, in Celsius. There's my speakers right here that I can use this little fellow for. You can also use my speakers to uh, decode marks. And it's pretty darn good. So, let me show you how sensitive the speaker is on this thing. Go ahead and hit this.